I want to try with you a little thought experiment. Imagine God never gave the Ten Commandments. First of all, there'd be nothing up there. But second, do you think that if God never gave the Ten Commandments, people would go around saying, you know what, murder is fine. Stealing is good. I don't think so. In fact, we sort of know that's not the case. Because at the beginning of the Bible, Cain kills Abel. And it's clearly wrong, but God hasn't given the Ten Commandments yet. Not only that, but there are lots of parts of the world that you know of where the Ten Commandments have really no influence. Other cultures that weren't touched by Jewish culture, and yet even there, they think murder is a bad thing. So tell me, why is it when God gave the Ten Commandments that Israel didn't just go, no kidding? Or, if they were less polite, they could just go, duh. But I guess you don't say that to God. I think that what we are supposed to understand is two things from the Ten Commandments. One that makes a general sermon and one that is particularly important this week. The general idea is that God wants us to know that don't murder isn't a human rule. It's the kind of thing that can never be right to kill innocent people deliberately, which is what murder is. It's not right to do in Nazi Germany in 1940, and it's not right in ancient Israel in 12 or 1300 BCE. In other words, it's woven into the fabric of the universe. It's not just that we know it's a bad thing and it's not good and it's going to cause a mess. It's always wrong everywhere, at every place, at every time, because the master of the universe created the world that way. And that's one reason. But there is another that I think should be really central to our awareness this week. And that is, why does God call all of Israel together at Sinai? It is, in fact, the first time that all of Israel has been summoned to one place at one time for one purpose. Before that, they were running over each other trying to escape. Before that, they were terrified that they were going to get caught or killed. But now they've been in the desert and they're being called together. Which means that this morning, what we're celebrating is the morning that Israel became a people. Because you're not a people till you have a purpose. And before this, Israel's only purpose was to get out of slavery, which is not a purpose. It's just a normal human impulse, but now they're the people Israel. The reason that I say it is so important to remember that this week is, of course, because of what happened in Texas. It reminds us that for thousands of years, there have been people in this world whose mission was to prevent us from living our purpose. It reminds us that to be Jewish has always been countercultural and offensive to people who don't like to be told the things that are carved on that ark. It reminds us that what Layla did this morning began in her Parsha thousands of years ago, which is to stand at Sinai. That's what our purpose is in this world. There are lots and lots of definitions 
of why people are anti-Semites. But my favorite one ever, and it is very typical of a rabbi to have a favorite definition of anti-Semitism, was that given by Maurice Samuel, who was a scholar and writer. When someone asked him, why don't people like Jews? He said, no one likes their alarm clock. In other words, if you remind people that there is, in fact, a moral purpose to living, people don't always want to hear it. Jews don't always want to hear it, because we're people too. But we repeat it again and again and again. It is carved on the ark. It is written in the Torah. We remind others and ourselves. We introduced this idea to the world that certain moral laws were always true everywhere at every time, no matter what. And that notion spread out through the world from the words that were spoken on this morning thousands of years ago. The fact that so many years later there are still people who want to destroy those who enact those words tells you just how powerful those words are. I remember in the 1980s, maybe it was the 70s, when my parents took a trip to the Soviet Union, when there was a Soviet Union, and they smuggled Torahs in. And I remember my father saying to me, this shows you how powerful this book still is, that a nuclear power in the 20th century is still afraid that people will see it. Again and again, we are reminded how powerful these words are, that people still want to destroy the nation that brought them into the world. That's why I'm proud that you're here. I'm proud that you're at Sinai, still, thousands of years later, as a people, to remind ourselves and the world of the truths that we were blessed to bring to humanity. They are still powerful, they are still enduring, and they always will be. Shabbat Shalom. We continue our service this morning on page 204, page 204 with Ein Kelohenu.